our moms did everything. Santa Claus should have really been a woman because our mothers were the true heroes of Christmas. Mom always knew what we wanted. That's why it was her who did all the Christmas shopping, decorating, gift wrapping, putting the presents under the tree. In fact, in the 1970s and 80s, if it wasn't for our mothers, I don't think we would've even had a Christmas. Let's face it, if it was up to our dads back then, Christmas might have turned out really ugly. Our fathers, on the other hand, didn't do crap. They mostly just ate, slept, and farted on the couch. Think I'm kidding? Look at this picture from 1978. Look what my father thought was an appropriate Christmas gift for his beautiful wife, an electric can opener. Every woman's dream. And because our mothers did everything, our fathers always tried to insert themselves into the situation to feel important. One year my father said, you better behave or I'm taking those gifts back to the store. I replied, don't make me laugh, Dad. You couldn't even find the store. The way he responded made me feel like Joe Pesci in Goodfellas. <laughs> You saw the paper, Anthony, my head was up like this, baby. So, so now I'm coming around, you know, I start to come out of it. Who do I see in front of me? This big prick again. He says, oh, what do you want to tell me now, tough guy? I said, Dad, hey, what are you, what doing, are you still doing here? I, you I thought I told mother. you to go return those gifts. I thought he was going to shit. Pow, ping, pow, you motherfuckers. Christmas shopping wasn't a 12-month obsession like today. Lack of money had a way doing that. And we all shopped at the same stores, so there was no shame in being seen at Bradley's, Caldor, Sears. Outside of Ramsey's interstate was Woolworth's, where there was a little ride that went in circles. As mom shopped, we would push our little sisters around in circles for hours, though we couldn't afford a quarter. Then we'd throw the next kid on and push. Talk about tough. There were other toys that you'd never see a kid play with today. Strictly for tough kids. Directions, put a cigarette in his mouth and light it for kids five and up. Okay, sounds good to me. Fathers were notorious back then for finding ugly trees wherever they could. Sometimes they came pre-lit. We always had a fake tree, and boy did my family make it last. I think we brought it with us from the old country. All aboard! And when we moved from the Bronx to New Jersey, we took our tree with us. I mean, look how ugly and out of shape this tree is. It looks like Cousin It from the Adams Family. Imagine the balls it took to put this ugly thing up in the window of your beautiful suburban home. <laughs> Italians. We found the sweetest letter to Santa Claus from a little girl named Edith who lived in Ramsey, New Jersey in 1977. It starts off, Dear Santa, for Christmas I would like to go to one New York Ranger game. Here you go, Edith. One hockey ticket for a tough kid. I want the bottom of a ski suit to match my snorkel jacket. We found you this Kim Kelly Classic Look Edith on sale at Alexander's for just $7.99. I want a hair curler and a comb brush mirror set with makeup. We found it all for just $9.44. I want a radio that has a time on it. We got you this Panasonic clock radio so now you can listen to music and know what time it is. And lastly, I want to have a pair of sneakers just like Billie Jean King. 
Little Edith represented the innocent, wholesome, tough girls of that era. She expected little, asked for less, and was grateful for it all. The 1983 movie, A Christmas Story, really resonated with us. It so mirrored our world that it could have been called A Tough Kid's Christmas Story. It had everything. Politically incorrect gifts, adults not coddling children, like when Flick has his tongue frozen to the pole. The real story here, a 10 year old went back to class with frostbite. Never happened today. Back then they chalked it up to, it built character. Years later, we would all laugh about it drinking at a bar. The movie also showed bullying, the snowball fight, the angry father, the F-bomb, mothers washing their kids mouth out with soap, the kid was, an adult pushing a kid down the slide with his boot, what is this action park, yes we were all Ralphies back then, having to wear a humiliating pink Pepto-Bismol bunny suit from our aunt just not to hurt our mother's feelings. And in the end, our do-nothing fathers actually came through with the one gift our mothers didn't get us or approve of, the Red Rider BB gun. And whereas Ralphie only had the radio to keep him company, 